This concerted campaign, yeah. I don't think anyone could have failed to miss it, which is designed to get us to consume creepy, crawly critters. Um, you've got the United Nations uh, with their edible insect project, the World Economic Forum, as you said here in the, the, the UK government, the Food Standards Agency is consulting. The EU has made mealworms um, legal and safe in legislation. Um, and there's a slew of of celebrities and a veritable swarm of articles telling us about how eating insects is healthy, sustainable, and it offers a six-legged solution to world hunger. The funny thing is we're not yet embracing eating insects. So why is that? Um, the thing is there's a biological diktat behind this. We are programmed to find insects revolting. Now you'll notice in lots of articles, we're told repeatedly that two billion people around the world eat insects. There's a reason for that. It's to make it seem normal. That's why we're told. But here in the West, we don't. It's not part of our cultural lexicon. We think of fish and chips as English. We think of roast beef and Yorkshire pudding as English. We don't yet think of mealworms and crickets as no. very English. And, and, and Laura, one of the reasons they eat so many bugs is because of places like North Korea, where it is absolute starvation and there's a complete lack of food. Uh, I've actually tried these bugs live on the show before and I can assure you they do not taste good they do not taste like normal food that they, they taste truly horrifically revolting and I will never put one of them in my mouth again <laughs> um I tried eating a cricket once in Mexico and first of all I thought oh I don't fancy this I'll pick the wings off and then I still didn't fancy it so I picked the legs off and I thought I still don't fancy it so I picked the head off and then I was left <laughs> with the thorax and I still didn't want it but you'll see in that Nicole Kidman video, which is a few years old now, there's been a whole raft of videos from various celebrities since. She keeps talking about how yummy they are. There was a BBC no, News not. article recently from an author in Uganda saying that the smell of crickets is like the smell of Christmas. Well, for me, the smell of Christmas is turkey and pigs in blankets. But yes, you're right. In some countries, it's part of their tradition to eat insects. And sometimes it makes sense for them when there isn't a better source of good quality protein. Of course, here in this country, you know, world hunger is not really a problem because we have, you know, we're almost um, self-sufficient in meat, mm. milk, dairy, grains, potatoes and vegetables, actually. Um, so we don't really have that same compelling need to in insects. Also, insects are poisonous and we associate them with eating feces and waste and rotting carcasses. We think of them as uninvited guests in our home and on our bodies. They have lots of legs and they're jerky and they make unpredictable movements. They're not very appetizing. So that's why these organizations mm. are working so hard to persuade I know, us. But, but, but the problem is, as you exposed in your book, A State of Fear over the lockdowns, when you went inside the government machine to make us think in a particular way, when they get on to something, they're not going to stop. And I worry about the prospect of this becoming normalised simply because it's coming at us from all angles. Yes. Well, let me give you a few sneaky ways they're doing it. There's all the celebrity endorsements that you've seen. That makes it seem normal. It makes it seem visible. makes it also seem glamorous. You're probably going to mm. see male influencers turning their masculine jaws to chomp courageously on insects on Instagram and all the rest of it. But the um, government's nudge unit published and then very rapidly unpublished report on how to get consumers to change their behaviour towards net zero. And one thing that report talked about was using schools and education mm. because children are more influenceable. Plus, once children are on side, that creates a multi-generational spillover. So, in fact, there's a, trail, a trial coming up in Wales where school children will be invited into workshops which will facilitate discussion about alternative protein sources and they can try insects. They won't be served bog bolognese in the canteen, but it's mm. very much about influencing children. Another thing you'll see is um, what we call a foot in the door, although in this case it's more of a mandible in the door. A Finnish bakery has started putting cricket, cricket flour inside its loaves of bread. So if it's something you're used to eating, like a loaf of bread, and the cricket flour is only a minority and you try and it's not that bad, it just gets you used to the idea of insects and, and mm. as an ingredient. Well, totally. And, and Laura, I just wanted to show you this little BBC News exclusive that I found earlier. Let me read it to you because I think this sums up everything we're talking about. Angelina Jolie joined the campaign and is now promoting eating bugs and insects instead of meat. Wait for it, Laura. The World Economic Forum says eat insects, it's healthy and you're saving the planet. Well, let me tell you, if the World Economic Forum tells me to do something, I do the total opposite, and I think we all should.